Punch me cuts have got to go. Hey, hey. Ho, ho. Punch me cuts have got to go. Hey, hey. Ho, ho. Punch me cuts have got to go. Hey, hey. Ho, ho. Punch me cuts have got to go. Ho, ho. Punch me cuts have got to go. Hey, hey. Okay, we're here at the, at the march for student uh, tuition. So this is the symbol for Kabataang Makabayan. Um, we're a revolutionary Filipino organization. We're basically about the people. Um, cuts to education, affects Native Hawaiians, Filipinos, Pacific Islanders the most because we're lowest as far as socioeconomic status. So this is something really important to us. And, and uh, it, it's, it's hard to get these uh, simple things passed, like free education, because the, the, I guess the system, right? It, right. It, it, it's fundamentally unequal. Right. And, and that, that's, in my opinion, capitalism. Absolutely. So it, it stands in the way of, uh, you can reform things, but you really need revolutionary kind of change. Right. We're not against the system, the system's against us. Ah. Okay, what, what is your sign about and I, how, how are you marching in solidarity with your fellows? Um, well, this sign is just about like the fact that the state legislature should have a heart when they consider students and how education should be a priority in the state of Hawaii because it's not right now. In terms of like them cutting the budget, it's not okay because that affects us directly as we have to keep paying more in tuition every single year. So what this sign means is just basically we want you guys to realize that we're the future and you should have a heart for us. budget cuts and we, uh, we've had a, enough of raising tuition for the students, you know, we want the university that's well financed and takes care of its people. You know, I've been, you know, I've been with UH for 40 years and I've seen uh, absolute decline in terms of, uh, of our ability to take care of students and provide uh, quality education. That's what we should be about. Yeah, uh, educated, uh, a movement guided by understanding, you know, cannot be misled. Hopefully. Right, absolutely. And uh, this is the future of Hawaii we're dealing with. We have to invest in that future. These people are going to be people who carry us into the, you know, into the rest of the century. About the future of Hawaii!
So rep representing uh, as proper the elite, we must. Exactly. It's time, to, it's time to speak truth to power. Time to call into question the forces of darkness that are marshalling against the people. Time to speak what needs to be spoken. We're out here dropping knowledge, people. We're not marching for money, we're marching for a future. Nothing more, nothing less. And, and parts of this flag also represent uh, some, some of the other uh, parts of society here. We don't live in a democracy, we live in a corporate oligarchy. Corporations not only create lifestyles, they create suffering, they create pain, and we have given them the keys to our country. It's time to take it back. Enough. Enough is enough. It's impossible not to participate. What we are saying is we want to evolve. We want to reimagine. And the time has come. Yeah. That's what we're doing. And, and, and the, 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 the whole capitalist structure, it, it makes it difficult for any... It's, it's fundamentally unequal, unequal. Democracy has been purchased. We technically never had a democracy. We have a Republican, Democratic structure. The Madisonian Compromise makes legislation difficult. <clears throat> but now with Citizens United, it's basically saying people, their voices don't matter. Whoever has the most money has the most say. And so, you know, we can also point the finger at the institutions, at the corporations, but it's on us. We have the power, and that's why we're in the streets today. And more people got into the streets, inspired by movements like Occupy, inspired by other grassroots activities, and I think the world could be a different place. I just kind of threw this together last minute. Yeah. Um, pretty much says uh, the state's priorities, just summed up, could go on longer with that, but uh, number one is support tourism industry. It's clear that the uh, people that actually live here get the back seat to uh, the tourists out here. Uh, number two is protect Monsanto. Uh, that's kind of uh, another issue that's not being heard uh, by by the state. They're kind of ignoring the, the voice of the people on that issue. And uh, number three is listen to other lobbyists, uh, other corporations like Hawaii Electric, um, other ones that are kind of bankrolling the politicians out here. And then uh, number 115 uh, is uh, educate the citizens, and that's been crossed out. So yeah, educated proletariat is a bad one. Yeah, exactly. They don't want they don't want an informed society. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it goes yeah. against their interests. And, and then I I've also heard uh, people say like tourism is a veneer for the military industrial complex over yeah. here. Yeah, I, would, I mean I haven't looked too much into the uh, relationship between. That, those two industries out here, but that's another industry I should have added onto the. They, they feed, they feed off each other. Oh yeah. It's just that when they peel away that uh, veneer, when they peel out that veneer, yeah, it's yeah. it's, it's kind of looks bad. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like Tom Brower just peeled a whole lot of that off. Yeah. With his sledgehammer. It's uh, it's becoming more and more clear every day uh, when you get like these these massive um, these issues that are just uh, really popular amongst uh, you know us citizens and then get struck down in, in Congress or legislative, um, you know, uh, in the state here. So uh, eventually people are going to start realizing what's going on and we'll be have more and more people. Everyone's starting to catch on already. So. Yeah. I mean, the system almost is so unequal that any reform that you try to pass within it will get will get yeah. crushed. So you yeah. really need revolutionary reform. Yeah, exactly. Revolutionary, yeah. sorry, revolutionary change. Yeah, yeah I, I agree and, uh, with that. Like um, it's a bio-revolution for life in my opinion. Yeah. The only, yeah, the only drastic change in society can, you know, needs a revolution. So, uh, kind of learning more and more about that, you know, in my studies, and hopefully I can do something uh, w with it. 
but you know, just showing up to these little. It's great. Yeah. yeah. You just oh. to start. Oh, thanks. Hey, thank you. Do you think we're made out of money? No. Everybody can relate with me. None of us are made out of money. Especially our Polynesian, Melanesian, Micronesian brothers and sisters. And they're the last ones who are going to be able to make money without education. So, this is for everybody. Thank you. students means that education should be a collective cost, not an individual one. Uh, an informed populace is a more productive, healthier one. Support the future of Hawaii! Support our educated society! Empower your students, empower our minds, support higher education! Higher education! Hurt the population! Cuts on 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 education! Support the future of Hawaii! That's uh, Thomas Square hey. Academy. <laughs> Is that you? No. What? Hey, uh, I'm D'Angelo McIntyre. I'm one of the supporters at the Occupy Honolulu. And I am actually taken by surprise. This is the encampment right here, by the way. D'Angelo, yeah. this is the encampment right here, right? Yes, yeah. yeah, this is the encampment right here. And this is the, the protesters. Yeah. I'm supporting the students, so I'm just going to show solidarity and go ahead and march with them. Follow behind. Right, right. Where, where they're going to the Capitol. You'd like to march beyond the Capitol to the banks, probably, or other places. <laughs> banks, Honolulu, <laughs> Holiday. The Capitol is a good place to start. Uh, okay. Uh, so, so we just passed by the Occupy Corner, uh, or Thomas Square, rather. Yeah. Uh, and this is about the student tuition and, and stopping. Oh, okay. Thank you. This is about student tuition. Mainly student tuition and uh, free education for all. 
thank you because it's the reason I'm not in, in college. I can't afford it. And I tell people, I, I don't. Who wants to go a hundred thousand dollars in debt on purpose? And I have. I want to be something great. I can't afford it right now. <laughs> So yeah, I'm totally on their side. And, and they, they just stole the whole encampment, your, all your possessions, and made you a whole lot of trouble. Probably a lot of trouble. This city is nothing but trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, it's, it's not what they know how to do is just take, 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 take. take. <laughs> At least they, they know how to concentrate. <laughs> So, so want to say anything uh, in addition to, to support the students? This affects us all. We're not just looking at ourselves right now. We're talking from the bottom down at what's looking ahead. We're not going to thrive if we can't invest in with the future generations. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not just, it's not an attack. We're not calling anybody out. We're just saying, look at us. Like, our campus is struggling. And we're the flagship university for this state. Like, we're the future leaders. You need to empower us. You can't hold us down like this. It's important. at the Capitol at the end of the uh, free education march, or rather lower tuition march, yes. the SNAP. Uh, so you, you're, you had, you've had enough already with the status quo. I've had enough already, and I'm here as part of representing uh, Labor Fest, but also supporting uh, you know, the tuition, the protesting of the tuition hikes. I was, it's been great to talk to students at this march, and I've been talking to them about uh, the Martin Luther King March and how that's going to be focusing on uh, increasing minimum wage. But also, I was just returned from a national conference and learned that 30% of faculty are tenure track. And what that means is the majority of faculty are now adjunct professors who many of whom can also qualify for food stamps, you know, because of their paid per credit. And so, having that lack of stability and security in higher education directly impacts not only academic freedom, but political engagement. And if you have folks who are afraid of losing their job, they may not be addressing controversial issues as often. So um, that's one of the things that I learned at this conference and that I was sharing with students over there, because they seemed a little bit disappointed that, you know, with the turnout here. But uh, even, you know, because there were 5,000 at the last march, right, before the age of the internet. But I was trying to explain to them that it might have something to do with the fact that higher ed and stability in higher ed is, you know, the tenure track, the, all the academic freedom and all that that comes with that um, is being eroded and that's affecting the engagement. Thanks, and, and sure. yeah, enough. Enough. Bring the voice of the students to the attendees.
attention of the legislature. And that's what the point of this march was. I mean, it, not only is tuition being risen, but you guys are getting cut out of most of the legislation this past. I mean, everyone cares about babies and old people, entitlements and uh, early education. Um, so what we want to do is bring the voice of, of students, of, of the youth, back to the attention of the legislature. This march, in general, was uh, to bring the attention of the funding cuts that were this year alone. Um, Seven million from the legislature and 2.5 million from the governor. Um, I would like to say thank you to the governor for giving us 83.9 million dollars yesterday. And, uh, but it's only a start. It's only a drop in the bucket from what's been cut from the university and from what needs to be done. So I'm glad everyone marched. Um, Let's go ahead and uh, make our voices heard. Education. So overall, my, my current book project investigates the history and present of the construction of the Polynesian race as almost white in biological and social scientific fields, and the use of this logic of almost whiteness to gird settler colonialism in the Pacific. Scientists and interested laymen of the 19th and early 20th centuries pursued what they called the Polynesian problem, which en encompassed questions such as the ones you might, might have seen on my flyer today. Where do Polynesians come from? What does a Polynesian look like? Do real Polynesians still exist? For some, the so-called problem was with how such seemingly primitive native peoples could have navigated the immense expanses of ocean between the Pacific Islands to populate some of the most isolated pieces of land on the Earth. Others struggled amidst various arguments for Polynesians' Aryan and Asian origins to understand where Polynesians, Melanesians, and Micronesians really fit into the existing racial hierarchies of man. So musing on this problem, for example, uh, S. Percy Smith, who is president of the Polynesian Society, a New Zealand-based learned society dedicated to the Polynesian problem through the study of Maori and other Pacific Islands peoples, wrote in 1911, 
And what consists the ever constant interest in the handful of people that comprises the Polynesian race? The answer is, no doubt, the mystery that surrounds their origin, their intelligence, their charming personality, and, one likes to think, their common source with ourselves from the Caucasian branch of humanity, which induces in us a feeling of sympathy and affection above that felt toward any other colored race. So visitors to Oceania have long seen themselves selectively reflected in the po indigenous peoples they have encountered there. This ever constant interest in the Polynesian race, as put by Percy Smith, perhaps most popularized at that time in the South Sea romances of authors including Herman Melville and Jack London, has added fuel to the fire of tourism in Hawaii and elsewhere in the Pacific at the, from the turn of the 20th century. Indeed, after the, the decline of Hawaii's plantation economy, what was made valuable and extractable to foreign powers shifted. As Adria Mata has pointed out, by the 1930s, capitalism's interest in Hawaii had largely transformed from the business of agriculture to the commodification of native Hawaiian bodies and culture under tourism. This commodification continues today and is one reason that I find the critical investigation of Western knowledge about native Hawaiian and Polynesian bodies and culture urgent. For while the abiding mainstream interest, however superficial, in Polynesia and Polynesians is often naturalized and depoliticized, it is actually an articulation of colonial power, what I write about as possession through whiteness. The effects of such power continue to have significant and often damaging material effects for indigenous peoples in the Pacific. So possession through whiteness is one strategy deployed within the ideological power of settler colonialism. And here I'll briefly repeat some of what I said in my talk for ethnic studies on Tuesday, although this talk applies that framework to different texts, namely the social scientific studies.